All right, so now we're into the texturing of the spine stage. And we're getting down to the nitty gritty. As you can see, we're starting to fill in some details. I like to do this before I go through and do like the finish finish because it rounds off all the hard corners in here. It just makes it a lot more comfortable and it's a bit more professional looking at the end. So a very technical job here. I'm using this thing called a triangle file. Very high quality tool. Cost me three dollars at the local scrapyard. Um, basically I made my marks and then this file is much harder than that steel but I gotta say the steel is pretty hard. I Normally if I can, if I can do this beforehand I didn't know what this blade was going to look like when I started, so here I am. But if I was going to do this beforehand, I would use my bandsaw to make little chips here and there to start. It is, or I should say the file was barely, barely harder than the steel. So you got to kind of start in one little spot, dig it in, and once you dig it in, And now I'm starting to work it flat. I was at an angle. See, just an angle. Get right back in there. Now I'm coming flat. I'm hoping I'm staying in the right spot. I am. I'm going to hit the other corner. An exciting video, isn't it, folks? So, as you can see, I already did three of them, and I'm on number four, and that's all the further I am right now, so I'm going to keep going here. And you can tell how deep you are by how wide the top is, because this is a triangle file. Now, I got this one a little bit closer. To this then I should have so I'll probably stop at that and do something up different up front here just for the sake of I made a mistake and instead of scrapping everything and crying about it I'm gonna work it into my design so I, I got bigger medium and then the little baby guy right up here and then we'll figure out something to do for the rest of it, it doesn't have to be the same pattern the whole way across all right so let me think about that finish that jump up and uh, we'll get back to it. Hours later, this is what we have. It is almost finished, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the light in here is pretty intense, but if I tilt it like this, you can actually see it is quite reflective. Since you've been gone, I took this from uh, 300 all the way up to 1200 grit on the grinder. I haven't done any hand finishing yet. That's all coming. The only thing I did by hand so far was uh, kind of hitting it with a 3-2-1 block and some sandpaper to get it flat from here to here. If you look real close, you can kind of see a deformation here and here. And that is from going onto the grinder this way with the taper and then going onto it this way to regain that little bit of a flat right there along the top of the spine by the jimping, which I managed to pull out of the fire. I think that looks pretty good. Um, I still might do more work down here. I haven't decided yet. I kind of like it. I kind of like it just the way it is. I don't want to do too much and then blow it out. So we are ready for one of the most dangerous steps in the entire process, and that is the buffing. Now, a lot of people don't buff. You could certainly stop here and leave it as is, and that's fine. I'd probably, you know, fade that little bit of a wonky spot right there. And when it's this reflective, any kind of inconsistency or a slight miscalibration in your angle, say you got two angles here instead of just one nice flat one, when you get up this high in a grit, the light just bends all over it, and it's really obvious. So you gotta be super careful and really meticulous before you can even get up to here, otherwise you'll be going all the way back down to the beginning and starting all over again. Luckily, 
I'm here and I'm staying here. So we're going to go to the buffer. And the reason I do that is because the next step after the buffer is going to be etching the hamen. And when we do that, we put it in acid, and the acid turns really smooth surfaces into really coarse ones. Well, that's all fine and good, except for the fact that if you got one really gnarly 120 scratch going down in there that you didn't see, well, now you just etched it even deeper with the acid. So I like to buff it. That lets me catch any kind of catastrophic mistake early. And I feel like it just really provides a nicer finish for the acid to eat into. You're not going to get any kind of streaks and whatnot. And as of right now, all my scratches go this way. They're going vertically. When it comes out of the buffer, I'm going to come back and hand sand with the 1200 grit, which is the current finish on here. And what that's going to do is I'm it's going to give me some really nice lines going in the horizontal position, which is going to let you know that I've wasted a whole bunch of time hand sanding this, and you better appreciate it for that fact, all right? So I'm going to buff. Uh, I'll film it. Sure, why not? It's not the most interesting thing in the world. The reason why the buffer is so scary is all the fuzzy wheels, all the little parts to it, it's all fabric, so if it grabs a corner or an edge or something hard in here, it's going to whip it right down into whatever is in the way. And I've definitely had these shoot at my feet before and across the room. It's not fun. So I'm going to go and uh, buff this. If you're curious, I'm using a green buffing compound, the good stuff from Harbor Freight. It's spearmint colored. Uh, I've used a bunch of compounds. I think green is the best. you got to get up over 800 grit to use the green for it to be really effective, but it puts an extreme luster on this. It'll look like chrome when I'm done, which is not what we want, but you got to take it up higher to bring it back down. So we're going to go over there and buff it, and then you'll see the final product. All right, so buffing wheels. Um, I like the yellow linen ones. I need to get a good buffer as of right now. I have the junk I can get at the hardware store, but it, it works for what it is. It's not a tool that I use all the time, so I'm not super stressed about it. I have to say that using three wheels stacked up to make one big fat one is a hell of a lot better than using one. Uh, one can get away from you and it'll pull your blade into the side of here. That's what all these nicks are. Hints of lost knives. Uh, compound doesn't take a whole lot, but this stuff is just grease with a little bit of uh, ultra, ultra fine grit to it. It's kind of the same stuff you'd use to polish your car. So this all gets whipped out, especially when you're grinding. Super, super important to wear glasses. This stuff sticks in your eyeballs and itches like crazy. All right, so like I said before, not the safest thing in the world. You always want to keep your edge kind of going into it. If this corner gets caught in like this, it's going to whip it out of your hands and go flying. Same thing, if this corner gets caught, it's going to shoot straight down. A whole bunch of gnarly stuff can happen. So, always keep the edge under it. And I like, I mean, you should go one way to keep your scratches consistent, but at this point, I'm going to go back and ruin this finish anyway, so I don't care whatever angle I need to hit it at to get to the right spot is the way that I'm going to buff it.